What's up guys? Welcome to Anime Kahai. If you want to help me out, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. So what was the answer? Now, let's enlarge these further. What do you think? They look just the same, don't they? Vester and Gabble flashed villainous smiles, and then they revealed the trick. The plant in the first picture is Hippocute Herb. The second one is a simple weed we picked from a lawn in town. Do they look the same to you? Vester's question made things begin to dawn on some of the audience. What they saw unnerved them. Hurriedly, they spoke up. They aren't the same. The difference is clear if you look closer. That's mean of you, Sir Vester. How can we tell the difference just from those images? Hippocute was a rare herb. I dined on quite a bit of it in the cave Veldora was sealed in. It's famously the core ingredient of healing potion. Most would assume it's structured far differently from the grass you step on every day. But a few people, myself included, found Vester's question very disturbing. Gazel was one of them, I could see the blood drain from his face. We were showing that Hippocute and regular grass were both structured in the same way, proof that, essentially, they were the same. It begged the question of what, exactly, constituted a rare herb, which, in turn, had the potential to overturn common sense itself. Vester lifted his arms up high, that sinister smile still on his face. Quiet, quiet, please. He and Gabble waited for things to settle down. When they did, he placed a series of images on the projector. Squeezing the extract from Hippocute and combining its magicules together creates healing potion. The level of this fusion process, as you all know, depends on the properties of the extract produced, and while we cannot go into details, we have successfully refined this extraction process to a purity level of 99%. That is how a full potion is made. Through a variety of images, while still hiding the core technology, Vester explained the potion-making process. Now we move on to Hippocute leaves. Grinding these leaves and combining their magicules produces a salve that can close wounds, although the effect is not dramatic. This makes sense, since these ground leaves are simply the leavings from the extraction process. An image of a leaf filled the screen. The leaf was shown being ground, then mixed with the extract from before to create an ointment, the basic process behind it. Nothing unnatural. I didn't get where Vester was going with it. Now, everyone, look at this image. On one side, you had leaves from Hippocute herbs grown in our cave, on the other was regular grass. They looked totally different. There was no way they'd have the same organic structure, but as the images flashed by, changes began to occur on the Hippocute side. Do you see? I only came to notice out of sheer coincidence. Sir Rimuru has ordered me to work on our Hippocute cultivation project, but one day, I took an interest in the strained leaves from our extraction process. Making ointment from it is well and good, but it has to be kept under exacting conditions or it quickly loses its effect. Plus, compared to the liquid extract used to make potions, its effect is extremely weak. I didn't give it much thought, since we had other uses for the extract, but if you think about it, do we really need this ointment? So as I said, I began to look at the strained leaves. And then Gabble realized that the shape of these post-extraction leaves, now free of magicules, was different from the Hippocute currently growing in the cave. Shocked, Gabble decided to take more detailed records, resulting in the images he was showing us now. So at the conclusion of all this, we've found that, technically speaking, there is no such thing as a Hippocute plant. The plants we call Hippocute are actually mutations. Yes! exclaimed an excited Vester. And it's not that Hippocute grows in magicule rich areas, it's the magicule concentration itself that causes this mutation and creates Hippocute from simple grass. I could see why he was excited. Everyone who heard him immediately began talking. That. That's a major discovery. Sir Vester, this is not the type of thing to announce in a place like this. There could have been some more appropriate occasion. You must contact a scientific society or the like at once and follow the proper announcement procedure. It was chaos inside the room. Even those who didn't take much interest before couldn't stay silent now, and the audience members who had been paying attention from the start were even more astounded. It was beyond anything they imagined, and the not the type of thing to announce remark symbolized just how much it roiled the crowd. Gazel, too, had his eyes wide open, and even Elmija and Erald were discussing matters with each other. I was surprised, too. I never gave it much thought before, but the way they put it, it made sense. It was pretty obvious, in fact. 
I doubted Veldora just happened to be sealed off in a cave full of hypocute herbs. If that was the result of a mutation, or a plant evolution, that was more convincing. And once all the magicules were extracted from this plant during processing, its shape went back to the plain old grass it once was. The dried, strained samples projected on the screen made it obvious that they shared the same organic structure as regular grass. In which case, no wonder Gabble thought potions could heal swords. Metal might mutate into magisteel ore, just like grass mutated into hypocute, and it was that ore that was processed to make magisteel weapons. Put the pieces together, and anyone would wonder if healing potion could work on magisteel as well. The result, the experiment we saw earlier. My original question. Vester continued. Of the exact nature of magicules remains unanswered. Monsters, and magic born, are exposed to the effects of these magicules, that much is evident. But what about demi-humans? If you took all the magicules out of their body, would they go back to being humans? I have boundless questions along these lines, but investigating them could prove fiendishly difficult. Despite this, we intend to continue our research, and in this land, where some of the world's greatest minds are gathering, we promise to keep pursuing the answers. And with that, we close our science presentation. To everyone who came out to attend, thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. Gabble and Vester bowed and spoke in perfect sync. They must have worked the presentation out in pretty deep detail. I don't think this was the first time they'd run through this lecture. The content, however, was excellent. I had left it all to them, but it really grabbed your attention, and what's more, it spread the word about great discoveries while keeping all the key parts a secret. Most important of all, we didn't have to worry about anyone copying our technology with what we revealed. Changing the nature of plants with magicules was a grand discovery, but it wasn't something other nations could easily replicate. They could experiment with it, but it wouldn't let them mass-produce hypocute or anything. Our position of superiority remained firm, and our research continued. As Gabble said, great minds were gathering here, and we'd have more before long. In a land so blessed with magicules as this one, we could do all the experimentation we wanted. Overall, this scientific presentation was a major shock to the attendees. After a morning spent enjoying fine music, this afternoon stimulated their intellectual curiosities. I'd leave it to the audience to decide which was more enriching, but given how much interest both events generated, I'd definitely call them a success. A lot of the audience seemed bored at first. I worried that we should have swapped the order out, in retrospect, but it appeared I was worried over nothing. In fact, maybe this was the right order after all. We certainly fulfilled our main goal of making the movers and shakers in the audience interested in us. I internally resolved to give Gabble and Vester unbridled praise the next time I had a chance. After the presentation came some free activity time. A number of our VIPs would relax at our salon, while others would peruse our food stalls incognito. A few would savor the hot spring bath, and others would enjoy checking out our amusement facilities. Each one of them had their own guide, so they were free to pursue their own interests. They were all abuzz about the concert and science presentation, too, reportedly spreading praise about them to everyone they spoke to around town. As I watched them take in the festival, I saw Arno and Bacchus come up to me, looking concerned. We need to talk. Arno whispered to me. It sounded like something important, so I brought Benamaru and Sheehan along and guided them to a room in the reception hall. There we saw Luminous. I'd suspected we would, given how agitated the paladin seemed, and I was right. She was in her maid dress, seated with her legs crossed. The juxtaposition of her pale skin and the black garter belts and stockings was, frankly, hot. Arno and Bacchus stood bolt upright behind her. The sight of them serving this maid was a surreal role reversal, but it actually fit her well. Luminous's powerful aura at work, I imagine. Now. She began before I could talk or even sit down. We have a treaty of non-aggression in place, but that will not be enough. I always knew she was impatient, but not this impatient. Exasperated, I helped myself to a chair. Something told me I wasn't about to get invited to a seat. Not enough how? How else? It lacks interaction. If we cannot make contact with each other, how will we ever have interaction? Um, I don't see why we can't. I organized the situation in my mind as I thought over what Luminous meant. As she said, there was a non-aggression pact between the Holy Empire of Lubelius and Tempest. The Western Holy Church was a part of Lubelius, which also helped boost our position with the Western nations. 
I really appreciated that, but in terms of interaction, she was right, we had virtually no diplomatic relations. We were just too physically distant from each other. There was no national level trade. Any circulation of goods was left to market principles, with whatever merchants or nations wanted to be involved. We weren't completely cut off from trade, though. I had actually asked Mial Mial to send a few traveling peddlers in their direction. Why wait for Lubelius when we could take action ourselves? We were conducting basic market research, and I had already gotten a report of products and goods that the Holy Empire specialized in. That report told me that Lubelius was an agricultural giant, producing great quantities of crops, primarily wheat, and exporting much of it to the Western nations. I looked at a sample, and it was very high quality, tasty, too. I was hoping to import some, in fact, but as mentioned, the distance involved made it tough. Before we started talking about more formal trade, I wanted to see that problem dealt with first. So that's where we were now. I wanted to deepen our relations in the future, but if you asked me what could be done right this minute, I couldn't give you anything. You inconsiderate Claude. Or are you toying with me? No, no, that's not it at all. Luminous gave my harried reply an irritated sigh. When I say interaction, I mean cultural interaction. Frankly, I underestimated all of you. The people under our protection in Lubelius lack a great deal in the way of artistic talent. Meanwhile, although I expected little, your musical presentation earlier was impressive. I have reconsidered my views of you today. Whoa, heaps of praise. She had a few kind words for me as we passed each other earlier, but I guess she really did like the concert. That, and now I understood her. Today's musical performance finally made her recognize our talents. I imagined Luminous had some kind of musical band, and presumably she was talking about an international exchange with its members, to help improve both of us. There are some among the vampires who are artistically inclined. They carry on the heritage of our old music while working on new creative endeavors, but lately they've been stuck in a rut. I think some input from visiting creators of your realm would be a fine catalyst. I had it right on the mark. And really, I appreciated the request. An experience like this always enriches the heart and mind. And if you want to improve your cultural activity, interacting with other people was the best inspiration you could feed on. I like that idea. We couldn't ask for anything better. I had no reason to turn her down, so I readily agreed. Looking at our future relations, besides, it was bound to have more positive impact than bad. Very good. I will make sure things proceed along those lines. She gave me a satisfied nod. Just as she did, an elderly servant placed some tea in front of us. That's it for this video guys. Thank you for always watching my videos and supporting my channel. Shout out to Autistic Lemur 420, Night Gazer, Zero Far Sarang, Kurt Iligan, Swarup Sagar, Ayush Kulu, JRDMPHX, Sean, Sovandai, and last but not least, shout out to Spidey Grapple Master. I'll see you guys in the next video.